Welcome to the Fantasy Football Forge. I'm Steve, and today we will be going over the rankings for the tight end position in preparation for the 2022 draft, fantasy draft. A couple notes, just right off the bat, what you are seeing on the screen here are the projections from my rankings based on my thoughts on what the changes are going to be with the teams from a few months ago. And also, I do not uh, include, like, touchdowns in my projections, for instance. I kind of look at them as a, how I set them up is kind of an optimistic, um, optimistic floor is what I like to call them, of what the um, individuals, you know, should end up looking like throughout the season on a week-in and week-out basis on average. That is what you are seeing here. All of the rankings for all of the positions are up on the website, theffforge.com, www.theffforge.com. There is a link down in the description to there as well. Please don't forget to do the youtube things. They are much appreciated. And if you would um, like to support the channel monetarily, that is obviously appreciated as well. And there is a link to the Patreon page down below. But thank you for any and all support. Just a heads up as far as how the tiers are going to be formed. I'm doing something a little different than I've done in the past, which um, isn't has never been recorded what I've done in the past. But anyways, I did a bunch of videos which were based on a whole lot of analysis that I did uh, since last season based on each of the positions. And in that analysis, I had tiers which each had, you know, a certain amount of players that I expected to score within those tiers. So I for the most part, stuck pretty faithful to the amount of players in each of those tiers to create these tiers of where some of the separations would be between players um, and their abilities. So just starting off here, there will be a change up at the top. If you watch my tight end video, I I'm more than hinted towards it. I pretty much just said it. Um, Travis Kelsey will be my tight end number two this season with Mark Andrews being number one. I think this may be the year that the tides will be a changing, and, um, you know, Travis Kelsey's getting a little older, as well as they've brought in um, a variety of new talent. I don't think that this offense is going to look like it has looked with Tyree Kill. I don't think it's going to be so focused on just essentially getting two players the ball. I think it will be a little more diverse and harder for defenses to defend against. I think they've started to figure them out. At least going into last year, I believe for the previous three years, Travis Kelsey's average depth of target had been going down, down, down. Eventually, that's going to mean something as he gets older. So there you go. Mark Andrews has his quarterback back, and uh, I just I think he's a great tight end. Had him his rookie season. That worked out well. Moving on to the third tier. We will, second tier, we will have another surprise. So how can you not have George Kittle up there? He's just a great tight end. The main reason why I'm fine putting him in a separate tier is just that the upside gets a little bit limited in that system that they are running there, as well as having a quarterback who may have some accuracy issues, at least early on in his career, and who's going to be running the ball sometimes. That'll take off some of the top-end opportunities that would otherwise possibly be available with a um, more passing-focused quarterback for a guy like George Kittle, and he needs to block a fair amount for them in that system. But here is going to be the surprise. Albert, I'm not even going to try it. Okay. Okwagbunum. Oakwick Boonham, Alberto, <laughs> he is an excellent freaking tight end athletically, and I may have underestimated a little bit of the connection that uh, Russell Wilson and their not Jerry Judy receiver, I can never remember his name, but they're, they're you know, the primary receiver that Denver has had for some years was injured uh, coming into last season, didn't have a great year, didn't really have the type of quarterback that was good for him. Definitely the um, type of receiver and quarterback connection could be there, but I also think that Albert O is a great fit for Russell Wilson, and 
Um, it, I think all the opportunity in the world is there for him, so I really like that. And then we will move up Kyle Pitts. Um, I don't necessarily love having him up above, like, Dallas Gobbert, Goddard, at least, but I also don't even have Dallas Goddard next, so... Uh, the, the thing about Goddard is the touchdowns concern me with the wide receivers that they have. They're now in that system, along with a running quarterback there, too. So I don't know. But Kyle Pitts had one hell of a first year. They have some more weapons now to take some of the pressure off of him. Um, I'm sure he'll still be a focus for defenses to some extent. But they won't be able, last year, I mean, it was pretty easy for defenses on what you do. Just take Kyle Pitts away and you're good. Uh, they had no other weapons to throw to. So um, I think that will help Kyle Pitts a lot, having that uh, Drake London there. I think is a good receiver. I think he should be an immediate guy as far as um, being a threat to offenses. And then some of those other weapons. So that is the uh, second tier there. Moving on to the third tier, I moved TJ up ahead of Dallas, and that really just came down to I'm concerned about um, how much those other two wide receivers in that system are going to take away from some of that upside that Dallas has, whereas TJ Hawkinson may have a more consistent year than last year with Detroit. I think Detroit is a team that is on the cusp of being, you know, a, probably a surprise, but like a much better team than they have been for some time. Whether that happens this year or next year could never happen, but uh, they're on the cusp of being a legit team. So there should be some more t touchdown opportunities, which is really what hurt Hawkinson last season, as well as the fact that similar to Kyle Pitts, Defenses really just were able to focus in on TJ and prevent him from killing them. And other than that, they were pretty fine. And we're going to have a similar issue for Darren Waller. He's going to drop all the way down in part just because of the projections. And when um, I had him also his breakout year, I've done pretty good with picking late tight ends for their breakout seasons. I don't think, I guess Albert O would be my guy this season. I don't usually have him ranked that highly, but... Um, I should mention part of the reason I have Albert O up there is just I wouldn't draft him before Kyle Pitts has been taken. That's not the point. It's just to point out that while I'm drafting, hey, I have like there's no reason to strike for Kyle Pitts right now when I know I can get Albert O a little bit later in the draft, but I have him pretty much neck and neck with these other guys that are up up here. So, anyways, um, Darren Waller, one thing I noticed with him and I've paid attention to, like, through last season is when Hunter Renfro is on the field, they tend to work a lot of the same type of areas of the field, and Renfro tends to really eat into that upside that Darren Waller can offer you, fantasy-wise. Considering there's now another star wide receiver there in Devonta Adams, I don't think that the uh, top three potential is there anymore for Darren Waller. Then Dalton Schultz is a guy who, especially in the early season, may be, you know, a top four looking kind of tight end, dependent upon the health of the receivers there. They may not have a whole lot of receiving options, in which case I could see Dalton Schultz really um, having a few great weeks while some of the receivers get healthy again. Other than that, uh, we got to go down a little ways. Don't know why... Dawson was probably just down here based on probably the amount of um, percentage of the team's targets that I would have given him because uh, obviously Buffalo has some dudes. But um, the touchdown upside is great for him in that offense, one of the best offenses that there is in the league. So uh, that's what makes a great tight end great is those touchdowns. So just a, an above average year for the touchdowns and all of a sudden he's looking real good. So let's move on to tier four where finally Mike Gusecki has dropped about five or six spots. Um, you know, how confident am I in there in that Miami offense? Not as confident as I probably like should be based on some of the talent that's there. 
but um, I do like it either way. Uh, I don't know. I'm not a Mike Gusecki lover anyways, but my rankings last year loved him too, and that worked out pretty fine. So who knows? I mean, he probably has the... Um, he could probably compete with these guys. And then Zach Ertz will leave there. Cole Komet will leave there. Like him quite a decent amount this year. Irv Smith Jr., we will leave. Tyler Higby. We will move Brevin Jordan up a little ways, and I probably would have had Jordan up right with like Cole Komet. However, uh, they lost a rookie wide receiver who I really thought was going to be a missing piece in that offense to help bring everything together. And so just, uh, you know, not having as strong of an offense is concerning for me, but I really like the talent in Brevin Jordan. And uh, he showed up a few times this rookie season last year to show that he might have what it takes to uh, and just be on the field more and, and get those targets and, and be a good fantasy guy as well. And then Gerald Everett, we're going to bump up. Uh, the Chargers tight ends, definitely useful some weeks, so not a bad move. And then probably surprising, I don't know what his ADP is, but I imagine a lot of people have him ranked higher than I do. But... Um, you see, I even I even had to move him up a fair bit, and that's probably because a lot of his work probably didn't have a high percentage of the throws last year. It was pretty much a touchdown-based season for Pat. Love the guy, love the talent, little concerned about that offense being under Mitch Trubisky. Not that Mitch can't uh, produce some, hasn't in the past, you know, produced some uh, fantasy-relevant players. But I just, he's in this tier for me. And then I think mostly I just trusted the projections and probably looked at my equalized value charts a little bit to see what they said about him compared to maybe a few of these guys. Whatever the case, that's where he is. Um, couldn't keep him out of that tier. We'll just say that much. Uh, definitely somebody who could be much better than this. And then we'll move on to my last little tier here, which we'll have some of the other kind of Pat Fryermuth type maybe situations mentally where it's like uh, they could have some great years. So love Hayden Hurst, love the talent, love the situation. Mm, probably a little bit of a muddled situation, however. And, um, I, you know, I, I think they had a pretty darn good tight end last season too, and he was a little just iffy as far as how often he could be used uh, Joe Burrow seems to prefer to target the deep throws, but, uh, you know, to the wide receivers. So um, still a guy who could be a surprise. And then David Njoku, well, that was kind of dependent upon the situation with, what's his face? I would say David keep an eye on for... Um, around mid-season when Deshaun Watson might be coming back could definitely become more relevant then. So actually I'm going to move Hooper up and I'm going to just cut that tier off there instead. There will be a few more names that I want to go over. There's um, like Robert Tanyan should probably... You know what? We'll move Robbie T up here now that he came back earlier and is apparently healthier than I expected. So I had kind of split up some of his work with Tyler Davis, the other tight end that was getting some good um, right after the draft. The GM in Green Bay said that the reason they didn't get a tight end in the draft is that they had a guy that they already kind of um, might be a surprise kind of guy in Tyler Davis. So I split up that workload a little bit, but I've always liked Robert Tanyan, uh, big play kind of guy, and they don't really have trusty, you know, Aaron Rodgers doesn't necessarily have trusty wide receivers to be throwing to, although I think, like, the starting guys will be fairly trustworthy. Whatever the case, this is my upside tier here to not forget about. David Njoku used to be in that tier. Other names, Donald Parham Jr., I uh, wish he hadn't gotten his injury last year, which was super scary to see live. But I don't know where his health is either. I like him a lot, 
but I, I don't know that he'll beat out uh, Gerald Everett anyways, even if he is fully ready to be going. Ricky Seals-Jones in New York is definitely interesting. James O'Shaughnessy could be interesting if it wasn't for having a better tight end there. Then we got John New Smith down here. Hunter Henry is up here. Obviously, um, worthy guys to pick up and use some weeks. Moali Cox, uh, another guy who's just probably not going to see enough targets in order to be reliable. Uh, I'd say he has proven that he can't quite be a reliable guy. Evan Ingram in Jacksonville, super interesting actually. We'll move him up. I'll go. I really don't like Seattle's offense. Um, so Evan Ingram, definitely a guy to keep an eye on. Might be worth a late round pick if you want to take a second tight end kind of dude. CJ Uzama, the New York Jets um, invested in some tight ends, some solid potential there if that offense were to take off this season. Trey McBride, if an injury were to occur to Zach Ertz, I would be thinking about uh, if I had the space, I guess, on my roster at that point and needed some tight end help, might be a guy to think about at that you know, midpoint of the season. See, I have this little sleeper tag here. Chico Ziam Okonkwo, absolutely love the guy. Don't know that he'll get enough work ever to be fantasy, um, like reliable enough on a fantasy level, but he might. Around that mid-season point, well, well, I guess we'll get to him if I'm thinking that, like, hey, you should be looking at him. He's on my radar is what I am saying. Same with Tyler Davis, low on that radar. It's Tyler Conklin, like I said, the New York Jets. Nothing wrong with Nick Moose there. Cade Otten, another guy where if there is an injury to the starter or if he were to be named the starter, all of a sudden he would just fly up. Really like that name. For the most part, I just left these all um, with their projections since I didn't make a tier for him. Tommy Tremblay, um, quality guy, could definitely be a surprise. Jelani Woods, also in Indianapolis. Uh, we all know about Foster Moreau, but... Zach Gentry, I like... I think that's all the guys I wanted to talk about there. So that is the tight ends. Let's just go over that. So Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey, the best guys to get, I think, this season. And then George Kittle... Kyle Pitts, if you want an early round tight end after that, but I'm really, really high up on Albert O's potential this season. Um, I would at least put him in this conversation, if nothing else, but I just want to make a statement here. So being bold and going for it here, better, tight, uh, better quarterback than they have in Atlanta, better offense than they have in Atlanta, so I just like that touchdown upside there. And then TJ Hawkinson, Dallas Goddard, Darren Waller, Dalton Schultz, Dawson Knox, all in my third tier. So still um, kind of the tier of guys that you would probably want to target to get some sort of reliable tight end help. Because after that, I don't know how reliable it'll be outside of um, these three probably I would include in that statement actually. But I could see any of these other guys uh, having just as good a season or better seasons than any of these three. So all in that big tier here. Here's the primary. Um, just keeping an eye on tier. Hayden Hurst, Austin Hooper, Robert Tanyan. Keep an eye out for those. Um, Tanyan should probably be better than keep an eye out. I'm just still a little concerned overall if he's going to be who he was how healthy he actually is, whatnot. But uh, that is it for the tight ends. So in our next video, we will be going over the running back position. And I love you. Thank you so much. Don't forget to do the YouTube-y things. Peace out.